and welcome to my session streaming for mobile server. My name is Stoyan Todorov and here are actually some more details about me. Um, I'm engineering manager of the mobile server and web team. I'm 27 years old. I've studied software engineering in uh, Sofia University. Um, started, actually started my career in Milestone. I have a developer background with mostly .NET in different teams in the company and some JavaScript, of course, which we will touch on today. And for the last two years, I'm part of the mobile server and web team. Let's uh, first look at uh, what is the agenda for this session. We'll start with the history of uh, how the streaming changed during the years in the, in the mobile server. What are the technologies behind the scenes that enable us to do direct streaming and transcoding? A small coding sample that will show you how easy it is to add the video in your web application. And at the end, some uh, protocol information of uh, what are the different ways to get video stream from the mobile server. Why streaming? Here I want to tell you a story for the evolution of transcoding to direct streaming. Um, let's first describe the workflow. When we have a mobile or web client, it requests a video from the mobile server, which will go to uh, the camera, get the stream, and actually, during the past and up until last year, we were always transcoding the video. That means that we will get the data, we will decode it, then encode it in JPEG and send it to, to the mobile web clients. The good thing there is that the clients are requesting the video that is with the size that they require and don't, they don't need to present 4K on a small screen like the mobile device. Um, the other thing that happens actually is this transcoding process, it's super heavy operation on the mobile server and it can take a lot of processing power to do so. There are two key factors, the bandwidth, uh, when you have JPEGs, the bandwidth is way lower, as we said, the video size is uh, just what is needed. And the other thing is the performance that I just mentioned. With the transcoding, we were able to handle mobile server, we were able to handle up to 20 Full HD streams with, uh, on a machine with hardware acceleration and relatively good hardware. Uh, and now with the direct streaming, we can do 10 times more, which is 200 streams simultaneously in one mobile server. Uh, what change there is that with the direct streaming we don't do this transcoding anymore on the mobile server. The only operation that is needed is to pack your H.264 video in the required format for the web and mobile clients so that they can play it. Of course there is a payoff, usually the camera streams are with higher resolution which means we will transfer more data but with uh, the faster networks that are now available on the, for the mobile and web we can, we can do it. Let's look at the technology now. So there are four points that I'll touch on. First uh, are the web components, then the HTML5 video element that we heavily use in uh, the web client and, and the SDK as well, and the media stream extensions, which is media stream extensions that are part of it. The fragmented MP4, which is the last one, is something that is happening on, as in the packaging in the mobile server. We'll look at it as well. Uh, here are the web components. On the screen you can see a super simple example of one, of one web component. Uh, there are custom HTML elements that, have, um, that are extending some other elements. Let's, looking at this example, we can see that there is a word count that extends P and you can use the word count as an HTML element, as any other HTML element. You can reuse it, you can think of it as a building block that you can have it in many places in your app and in uh, uh, other apps as well. Uh, we have such web components, we'll see them in a minute. Uh, the key thing to mention for the web components is that they use Shadow DOM and they encapsulate their business logic and appearance and the way that they communicate with other web components or with your business logic in your web app is through events. Um, 
Okay. And here is actually one example from our solution. It is the video stream component. Uh, you can find the source code in our GitHub on the MIP SDK mobile, the web part of it. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see the mobile server. And uh, with the dotted line, I have the MIP SDK mobile, which is hosted in your web application. The video stream component actually contains one more that is a bit smaller. It is the video connection. The video connection has only one purpose, to open a WebSocket to the mobile server, get all the data from it, and send it to the subscribers. In this case, the video stream is a sub subscriber, and the video stream uh, is responsible for creating the HTML5 video element, uh, adding a source buffer to it, and pushing all the data that comes from the video connection to its, uh, its buffer. And one key thing is that to make sure that your video is playing with the lowest possible latency. The last thing on the web, te web technologies is uh, the HTML5 video element and the media source extensions. Looking at the diagram at the right again, you can see that video element, video and audio elements actually, they can have their media source. Uh, which has its own buffer and with the media source extensions you have control of uh, what is buffered, when data is being added and when it's evicted and in the diagram you can see that the fetch requests we can we are downloading some data and adding it to the source buffer and then the video or audio element in this case will present it. Um, in our case the fetching is fetching from the mobile server with this video connection that we saw and we are using the, this source buffer to put the data there. Um, it's key also to mention that the supported file format for this media source buffer and the video element is fragmented MP4. And talking about MP4 uh, and looking at the backend, the stuff, here's what's happened in the mobile server. This is one regular MP4 file, and on the right there is a MP4 inspector, a screenshot of it that shows what is the structure of one standard MP4 file format. There are some boxes, each MP4 file is constructed with those atoms or boxes, and they have uh, different information about the uh, content, uh, the general describe the format of the data and the file. The first couple of boxes are metadata and then in the last one we have one really big box that contains all the video data. But this file is not suitable for streaming. That's why it evolved into the fragmented MP4. And uh, if we just look at the screenshot again, we can see that in the beginning the first three boxes are very similar to what we have, have had in the um, MP4 file. But um, there, after that, there are a lot of move and mdat boxes that are fragments. Each, each, of them, each of those pairs is called a fragment, and we have uh, more video coming from those fragments, and they're being added as a stream. And having that all in mind, now I hope the puzzle starts to sort itself, so uh, a, a short uh, rerun, we have the mobile server which gets the H264 video packed it in this fragmented MP4 file, then we're sending it to the web, to the SDK, which will get it added in the uh, HTML5 video with its buffer, and it will be presented. Now let's look at how easy it is to actually use it. I've prepared a small web application. You can see that there are just a couple of files and the SDK here in the lib folder. Uh, looking at the index HTML page, we have a few buttons here that will help us to connect and log in to the mobile server, then we will load all the cameras. Here we are calling the functions on the, this app.js where we have our business logic. And uh, in the container, we have a container that will, ha that will uh, have all the buttons for each camera of the system and we have a camera wrapper that here will add the video stream. 
and this commented code is the template that I will use to add the buttons or the video stream, but that will happen on the JavaScript part. Okay, looking at uh, the methods that we saw the buttons are, are calling, uh, on connect it's super simple, uh, just calling the connect command on the SDK, on the login we have username and password logging in, uh, then we get all the cameras with the third button, which you uh, have here in this tree. You have the whole cameras, you're traversing the tree and adding uh, a button for each camera. Uh, here, maybe this is good to, to notice that the camera ID is something that is important for the view uh, to be able to request it. So uh, we have an attribute that is called camera ID and I'm pending this to all of the uh, buttons. And here uh, in the send request stream and low video, we will actually uh, get the video from the mobile server. What uh, we will do is first to uh, get uh, the container where we want to add the video with document query selector and we're looking for an item with an ID, uh, which is called camera wrapper. Then before doing anything with it, I want to make sure it's in a HTML is empty so that I can add different cameras in it. Okay, and here is where the magic happens. You have to create a video element which is a custom element and we can create it just as any other one because it's loaded already with documents create element then after that just to make sure it's presented in the screen I'll set some width and height And to, well, now when we have this uh, video elements created, uh, we need to add it to the container. So uh, the create element is not adding it in the DOM. It's currently not present. So we have to call container dot append child video element. And uh, the last thing, as I mentioned, the components are uh, communicating with the app or with each other with events. We need to uh, make sure this the video starts. So we'll dispatch events, calling dispatch event on the video element with a custom event that is called start. So, and yeah, the one thing that I didn't do is the camera ID, which I have to set as well. As I showed you before, here we have the camera ID uh, as an attribute of the element, so I can go, oh, no, which is the button in this case, get attribute camera dash ID. Okay. Let's see what will happen. Um, I have a small server that is running this app. Now we see the login form with the connect login and load cameras. I've pre-filled username and password. So if we connect, login, and then load cameras. On the left, we can see that we have a list of cameras and all those are buttons. And when you click on the drift race camera, here it is. That's how it is, is to get your video in your web application. You can also change to some other camera and go back to this one. As I uh, told you, 
we are making sure that the latency is uh, the minimum possible, so you have between one and two seconds, not more than that. That was the live demo. Going back to the presentation, the last thing that I want to touch on is the, some information about the protocol and what are the different ways to request the stream from the mobile server. The request stream command has its video parameters and two of them in this case are the most important one and that's what I've uh, showed here. Uh, first is the stream type, you should use the fragmented mp4 for the stream type parameter and the second one is the fragment duration, milliseconds, uh, which by default in the web SDK or the milestone uh, MIP SDK mobile that is JavaScript and used usually in web, by default is 350 milli milliseconds. That means we will have fragments, those combination of two boxes on the right with the duration of 350 milliseconds. And we can see that the first so all, all the red boxes are the chunks that we received from the mobile server. The first box that will come will have uh, an iframe and depending on your GOP you have a uh, different count of boxes that you receive. Uh, that's why we have this additional information for the file in the beginning and then we receive two chunks that, have on, that are only fragments with PNB frames. And then after a second we have a new GOP and again a new box with this information, the metadata. The other way to request a video is if you use a negative number for the fragment duration, mobile server will return you one continuous stream without even adding a second time this, this information. You will receive only fragments from the beginning. And then the last one is if you add some really big number that is higher than your uh, GOP size in milliseconds, you receive every time, every chunk will be a separate playable mp4 file that will have this additional information in it. Before we wrap, wrap up, I want to say a few words why it's better. First, it's efficient. You, if you use it, you drastically reduce the load of your mobile server. It doesn't matter if you use it as an integrator on, uh, with SDK or with web or mobile apps, the mobile server will be really happy or the processor on the mobile server. Second, uh, it's super easy to use. As you can see, you can add just maybe 10 lines of code and you can have a video uh, in your web application and it's not uh, always needed to have a list of cameras and choose a camera. If you know your ID, you can just add this in your um, HTML and make sure that you connect and log into mobile server. So you always have this on your, I don't know, landing page, let's say. And third, it's available. That's a HTTP stream with a super standard fragment MP4 format, which is playable in many different players. You can use whatever you want to to play it. That was everything from me. I hope you liked this session. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.